What's up YouTube? Here with one of our top sales pros, Joe Skiba. He's actually a real roofing professional. A lot of these roof salespeople don't know how to actually yep. build a roof, do they? I agree. In this misconception that all roofing salespeople don't know roofing, that everyone associated with Lee is just a salesperson. Joe, what's your background a little bit? Well, before I met Lee, I was in the oil field. I did um, oil rigs. I was moving drilling rigs as a crane operator, worked in the refinery. I met Lee with zero sales experience and took off from there. Hey, here's the deal. He's one of our top guys. He uses our strategies to sell commercial, high-end residential, and he has the time to hang out with his family. And that's what the American Dream is about to me. We're here in front of his, one of his retail commercial projects. This is on the beach. It was a cash deal. And we're going to be breaking down how you land retail commercial projects, how to be a better project manager, and a little bit about TPO, common mistakes that people make when they're bidding TPO, when they're bidding tapered insulation, and when they're building these jobs. Coming into this, you know, you were a residential salesperson, mm -hmm. a door-to-door -door guy, you had a lot of success. What was the biggest intimidation about getting into commercial? Uh, just the lack of knowledge, really. Um, but after, you know, diving in the books and leaning on the resources that we have, I was able to get familiar with the TPO and PVC and the tapered systems through training I went to with Versico. With Cagney and I, we went to a Versico training. Learning that, it, it opened my eyes up to all the commercial, all the flat roofing systems, and it just really was like the last piece of the puzzle for me. To yeah, because you wanted to know the technician side of it before mm -hmm. you had the confidence to sell. Yeah. I'm kind of the opposite. I'm always just like, give me the sell, I'll figure out the yeah. technician stuff separate. What we really want to break down is, there was a lot of roofers on this project. They, you weren't their first choice. They were paying cash. So from a company that does insurance restoration, okay, before we finish this guys like subscribe comment below seriously we're gonna be giving you an epic breakdown on this one but there's a lot more to come tell me you know how did you get this deal well I had met them a while back and on a residential property you know become friends on Facebook and I'm always posting my commercial content and they saw it they were in the middle of a storm that was just pouring water in their other roofer couldn't get out here they gave me the opportunity so I was about an hour and a half away did a u-turn when I got the phone call came out here in the middle of the storm we stopped the leaks ultimately that got my foot in the door to give the proposal what kind of roof system was it this is a it was a flat roof system it had a PVC on it with a ballast system with gravel under it and we're going back with a tapered system and a 60 mil PVC did you tear the ballast off yeah all the way off. Yeah. Where did all the mess go? You already got. Oh all yeah, that we had dumpsters. Everything. We got this dump bucket. Everything's gone. Went straight from the roof into the dumpster. I think we should get up here and talk a little bit about the project management from on top of the roof. Let's go take a look. So this roof, it was it was truly flat. They had a makeshift drainage system. It was something like I've never seen before. They had four main drains and they had basically a small irrigation system made out of one inch pipes running to the drains. Not conventional, it's not a standard practice and it wasn't working. That's why they were leaking. So we tore that off all the way down to the decking and we put with the base layer of an inch and a half ISO board and then we installed a taper system on top of that. So now we've created positive slope to the drains we reduced it back to the three, four main drains. We had a plumber come out here and snake their drains and make sure that everything's working properly. So here's this makeshift drainage system I was talking about. Behind you, you got this main drain. You can see that they have put a trench in the ISO board. They were running one inch PVC pipe into the drain. I've never seen it before and it was leaking everywhere. And so if you come over here, you can see this drain and this is, I've never seen anything like it. A one inch elbow turned up and the water is supposed to drain into there down this one inch pipe into the main drain. It's, I've never seen it before, it's not typical, and it wasn't working at all. So the water here to even go into the drain was gonna have to be accumulated already to six inches before it ever made it to the drain. So a lot of problems here on this property. Oh, they had leaks in the parapet walls, leaks with the ACs. Um, we're gonna be raising the curbs on these AC systems so that uh, they meet the minimum requirement. All in all, they're gonna have a much better roof system. It was positive drainage to the drains, hopefully a repeat customer. You know, right here we have another a temp at a repair and it was leaking in this exact spot right through the building into the bathroom you know they just got zip tape on here and a little bit of coating it's obviously not correct and it's definitely not for the long term so if you're a commercial property owner or you don't manage commercial businesses you know just keep in mind that the cheapest repair is not always the best and for your long-term operation you could end up spending thousands and thousands more dollars than you anticipated just from faulty repairs or somebody without the proper 
knowledge of the system. Where's the biggest mistake that last roofer made to lose the account? Um, not showing up when they called and, and not really, in, in my opinion, maybe not even knowing the product that he was dealing with because the solution that he had attempted, it was just kind of out of left field. It wasn't, it wasn't gonna work. It looked like an irrigation system. It didn't belong on the roof. All right, so these guys, they had to get you with price, like bidding this out. You gotta know the right cost for insulation, your cost for TPO, getting your material cost. They care about the bottom line. You don't wanna over or underestimate. How do you make sure that you don't give them the right price? Well, basically I just gave them a fair price. Um, the cost of the construction materials has gone up and they were aware of that. The big thing here was business interruption. Stopping the leak at the time that I did, they were able to operate during the busiest week of the year. And so that really got me their attention. I was conscious about their operation and what they had going on, not just what I wanted to do. And, you know, once we got the price straightened out, was waiting on the material and being able to maintain the repairs and service the property between the time that we signed the contract and the time that the materials came was a big deal for them as well. And here we are, we're doing the final construction on it and hope to wrap it up. It's gonna be great. Two years ago, we had a storm. Tons of people, all the roofers ate here. They probably called us storm chasers, the locals. Mm -hmm. There's probably locals still coming in here. We kind of became a storm catcher. Two years passed since the storm. One thing you did really well this year is you used our you know, letters and so, to get high-end jobs. Can you talk about how it's not about selling more roofs, but it's about selling the right roofs and how you did it and what, what your book of business is gonna look like this year? One of my biggest things is time freedom. That's why I wanted to get out of the oil field. I want you know the quality of life with my family and I don't wanna be only at home part-time, you know, I would like it to be the opposite. So I really leaned on the system writing direct mail, you know, targeting high-end homes. And what that's done for me is I'm gonna go from doing 100 jobs a year to where I'm gonna do 25 and mix in some commercial in there. You know, I think my book of business is gonna be somewhere between two to $4 million by the end of the year. It's just really from targeting the right homes, the right properties, and I'm not your average door-to-door -door salesman. I'm not going in a neighborhood and knocking 20 roofs anymore. I, I mean, I don't do that anymore. It's not part of my operation. Yeah, and I mean, what's that done for you? What, I mean, obviously you make more money, but you kind of took the next level of becoming a roofing professional. It's done a lot for my confidence. It's done a lot for my book of business and the type of clients that I'm attracting now are the type that I want to work with. I'm getting inbound leads from people who want to do business with me. They understand that I'm tar that I'm working on luxury homes and that people are trusting me with their one to two million dollar homes on the water and that I'm able to get it done for them and you know with a cost effective solution. All in all it's done is increase my type of client to more of what I want and I don't have to do as many projects. Ironically Joe's biggest fear was he's able to work with his hands. When this storm happened he was taking on a lot of projects. We rebuilt a news station and Joe did a lot of the interior work. We rebuilt this entire TV studio. Mm -hmm. You were taking time away from selling for guaranteed money. Now you're trusting the process. Where was the mind shift there? And sometimes it was hard to actually for you to take the tool belt off. So for someone watching this is in that struggle, how'd you overcome that? Well, I mean, the hardest part is to trust the process. Even though I, I trust the team and I've been part of this guy's operation for a long time, the process of waiting for your money, it, it's a process, you know? you got There's more to this job than it's just knocking on people's doors and getting them to sign a contingency. That's not where the money's at. The instant gratification and the paycheck on Fridays that I was getting from doing labor, and I was good at it, so I was able to charge premium price and get good money and, and get the job done. But making that shift, it was a little, it was tough. You know, it was tough on me for about four months. And I really just put my nose to the grindstone and knocked a bunch of doors and built a pipeline kind of leveled itself out and now I have income and leads I have jobs getting capped out but it's definitely a process and if you're not committed to it you're only gonna draw that process out and it's gonna create more the growing pain or the salesman problems that you see typically in the industry hell yeah man hey you're looking good looking fit talk to a little bit about our company's personal development, core values, working with a group of guys, you know, you pushed me to be the best version of myself. There's been times where we were in San Antonio. I wasn't living to the same standard that I'm living to now. I agree. You yeah. know, how long ago was that? Five years ago. Five years ago, lots of change. Yeah, lots of change. Uh, lots um, changed for you in the last five months. Uh, so talk to them about, how, about our culture and what you like about personal development. Well, the culture it definitely pushed me to do the 75 hard and I, I didn't finish. You know, I, I'm honest with myself. I made it 50 days doing everything down to the T, but I got what I needed from it. And 
and you know, I'll go back and I'll complete it. Those 50 days, they changed my routine. They changed the way that I scheduled my day. I, I really feel like I took what I needed out of that and I've been working out consistently every day, you know, changed my diet. I feel better, I'm more confident. All in all, I've learned a lot with the company and you know, I've leveled up my skills, but what I'll take if, as, if I move on and when I move on, I'm going to take the personal development and you know, being my most optimal version of myself everywhere. Well, my know? job is to help you yeah. get to the next chapter of your life. If yeah. that start your own business under Skiba Construction, you got my endorsement. That's become a leader of our commercial department. Mm -hmm. You got my endorsement. My point is, is that a lot of times business owners in contracting, they worry about losing top talent. All I focus on is how do I make this opportunity so good? And like, if I'm gonna pay for the direct mail mm -hmm. and I'm gonna give you all the leads off the Facebook video we just created, and then you're gonna be a part of the emergency response push this year, me, you, and CAG need to be tighter. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And basically those monster jobs with millions in profit that we landed last time around, they still haven't paid the big payouts yet. Process on a mega millions is even longer. I understand that and I do see that. And you know, I, I'm committed here, I'm invested here. I'm not going anywhere, just looking out and, down the road, you know, who knows where it's gonna take, but I know that the personal development that you've incorporated with the company is something that has really taken me to the next level. Aside from, you know, the general construction knowledge and all that, the personal development, changing my routines, you know, spending the time with my family, quality of life, it's all eye-opening and I never saw anything from uh, an entrepreneurial perspective, you know? I was always uh, an employee, just show up, run the crane, do my job, get paid, and I was comfortable doing that. This completely changed the way I think. It's changed the way that I operate. Well guys, if you're watching this and you're a business owner, you want guys like Joe. He was a crane operator, but he was hanging out in a network marketing business event. I'm at the bar at the yeah. event and he pops in and he's like, hey, are you Lee? Is your sister Chelsea? Yeah. You know, I'd heard about this guy. He was a bruiser. He beat some people up in high school. Yeah. <laughs> but the reality is, is like, you know, I'll take a fighter in my business. You got to fight for your American dream. And this guy is willing to fight for his family, fight for my company, fight for his client. Uh, and I'm so grateful to have him on my team. I just want to say thank you, buddy. Appreciate the service. Oh, yeah. And I'm here for you, man. Whatever the next venture for Joe Skiba is, I'm here to help you hit, hit that goal. One thing's for sure. Not enough people in this world like you, man. You're doing a good job, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate it.